Hello and welcome to a 1v1 cast on Fedrid Folly. Starting off at the bottom side, we have Phoenix Reborn playing as the Lord Commissar. On the top side of the map, we have Adila playing as that Warlock as well. And straight away, Double Dire Avengers here for Adila, followed up by some Banshees. Phoenix Reborn going to be going for those Double Guardsmen with a Sentinel. Some <laughs> Warlock abuse and chats apparently between Phoenix. Some Commissar abuse on the other side. Both sides abusing these two heroes. Not really abuse though. But Sentinel going to be acting as a counter towards the bat. She's here. Double Dire Avengers do need to be careful of the Sentinel bleeding potential. The Sentinel doing about 30 DPS. 30 to 35 DPS. Should be able to pick off Dire Avenger models. And Dire Avenger models quite expensive. And Commissar himself just going in here. Going to try and bleed some models here. Broadly Dire Avengers down by quite a bit so far. Bringing them down to less than a two thirds HP. Going to even land a special there, but at the same time the Commissar's Refactor Shield has run out and it makes him vulnerable to specials. Going to get four stuff here in the end. In fact, taking a lot of damage here might even end up going down. Meanwhile, the Warlock going to be jumping onto some Guardsmen here. And that Lord Commissar able to just scrape away at 20 HP. That was extremely close there. Meanwhile, Dilla able to take down a Guardsman model himself, but one Guardsman model isn't going to be worth as much as that one Dire Avenger model. There was only one Dire Avenger model, I believe. But the Sentinel going to come in, trying to finish off. All the Commissar started earlier. Some Guardsmen going to come in for some repair support. Another Dire Avenger model is going to drop down here for a dealer. Dire Avenger is going to be pushing in behind some green cover, but out of range of the Sentinel. The Sentinel is actually going to outrange him right now. In fact, some of the Guardians, or some of the Dire Avengers, sorry, not getting behind that cover properly can be a bit infuriating sometimes with the cover system. And these Dire Avengers behind yellow cover instead of green cover. Meanwhile, at the same time, there was nothing in the bump side here for Phoenix, but flying coming in mid through with some Banshees. The Sentinel does not have stump available. It does take a lot of damage from Power Melee since it is heavy infantry after all. But in the end, the Sentinel is able to get away. Some catachins are getting made. Adilla needing to send something down to that lower side of the ground since he is unable to actually get any control of it whatsoever right now. But at the same time, Adilla is in control of the higher ground. And Phoenix will need to send something up there and he will need to push some Guardsmen. Though, going to get forced off the bench. He's able to do quite a lot of damage there. We're not able to land any specials. And the Commissar is going to execute the Guardsmen as well, but they're very close to base anyway. But the Execution bugging out there a little bit ended up being a little bit delayed when it should have been instant. You could you heard the sound before the ability went off, and the ability went off a little while after the sound went off. We're ready here, sir. Go ahead. Some castions though coming out of base going to be used to actually interrupt this guardian weapons team with their all unreliable ability. Shotgun blast acting as a melee counter as well to the Banshees and Warlock. Catchers coming into the area now, but you need to be careful because you don't want to bleed in models since they do cost power to reinforce and guardsmen taking a lot of damage here from that warlock. Warlock is also armed himself with an immolator as well. Going to be doing a lot of damage to the guardsmen forced to retreat through that immolator, taking so much damage down to just 15 HP. He's still in three models though. And now Dilla's going to make his way towards the generator. The guardian weapons team is going to keep a loss of control right now here on the map. But the Catachins can always push in with their own reliable descent, or even gain the stump upgrade as well to help act as a melee counter. The Commissar has been capping on the high ground while this is all going on. Our reliable is used, a generator has gone down, Catachins is going to be engaging here. The Sentinel is very low right now, Guardsmen are coming in for some repair support. But Shotgun Blast is going to be used against that Warlock here. And suppression has also gone off there. Sentinel is going to go down here, taking a bit too much range damage. Guardsman unable to get the repairs on. I'm not sure what suppressed those Dire Avengers there, because the shotgun blast was used onto the warlock, unless that shotgun blast has got a wider cone than I expected. And the power melee from these Catachins is going to be too much from the warlock to handle. Catachins is doing 120 power melee damage, 20 power melee per model, and there are six models there. Going to be a win there for both players essentially. A Sentinel is worth slightly more than the Commander, given if you wait for the Commander to go down to 250 requisition. And a Sentinel is even getting repurchased for Phoenix, and Phoenix did actually have that Sentinel upgraded with the Stump. So, overall, that fight was probably worth it more for a Dylan. At the same time, Delay was taking down Jerry's farm, definitely in favour of a Dilla there. The Stort Field used on Tabanchis prevents them from taking as much range damage, and they're going to be getting shotgun blasts as well. Taking two model losses before they're even able to get into melee combat, and Catachins are able to go toe to toe with these Banshees here. And in fact, they might even wipe the Banshees. Banshees gaining in there a little bit too aggressive there, not even taking down a single Catachin model there. And those Catachins are going to kill another unit on retreat with their melee. These Catachins so far have done a lot of work for Phoenix this game. Going to be losing a couple of models there in that push, but the Guardian Weapons team going to be set up in the building. Comps are unable to do too much about it, but the Guardian Weapons team unable to actually leave the building as well. 
and since Phoenix is in control of that bomb side and map, that is going to be fine. Sentinel coming in with the stomp here. Dilla going to lose or going to get stunned on two of the models, but he's going to force melee onto the guardsman here. Doesn't does have a warlock leading them, but the warlock was stunned, so there was no leap into combat. Warlock leaps in now, but the guardsmen have retreated away, so there is no knockback on retreat. Grenade even getting thrown into the sentinel. If you actually land a grenade into the sentinel, the amount of damage that it does is quite insane. But landing a grenade onto a sentinel is extremely tricky to do, although if there was one player to pull it off, it would definitely be a dealer. There's some guardsmen going to be still remaining on the field. Sentinel remaining on the field. These dire avengers are going to be get, going to get forced off to back to base now in the end. Guided weapons team also going to get forced off as so that commissar wins the standoff against them here as well. And a dealer going to be the first person to take up two tier two. Still hasn't repurchased his warlock yet. I think he does have the requisition or is close to the requisition to repurchase him, although after reinforcing. His Dire Avengers, he will need to wait a few seconds. At the same time, Guardsman going to be pushing in through here. Sentinel with a decap onto that VP. 482 VPs to 391 Adilla behind on VPs by 100. And at the same time, I think that Adilla is probably ahead on the economy. I've seen him in control of a little bit more of the map in some areas. But at the same time, Phoenix has been in control of that requisition point at the bomb side for quite some time. For that mid power node, gonna get torn down. Guardsman upgraded with the flamers here. Still actually unable to finish off that power node, but should be able to get it now. But Phoenix a little bit scared. Those double dire avengers doing a lot of range damage. That one dire avenger squad more upgraded than any other with both the warlock and the aspects of the avenger. And now Sentinel is going to come in here. <coughs> Wraithguard going to be the first purchase in tier 2, Phoenix is still not teched up to tier 2, is only on 100 power right now, spending extra power on these flamers, but these flamers are unable to actually do too much damage, in fact if Guardsman with the flamers going to go down here in the end for Phoenix, Phoenix is soon going to lose his triple cap once these Wraithguard hit out onto the field, Cash is coming in for a flank against these Dire Avengers, oh and Reliable going to get used, going to knock them over, going to be destroying some terrain in the area, and Dire Avengers going to get forced off, Grenade gets thrown, are going to be missing that sentinel as is able to walk past it and dodge it but Phoenix in need of a power bash right now since he is very far behind in terms of power if Adila was to rush a falcon the falcon would have been able to give so much map control but decided to go for Wraithguard instead and Wraithguard is normally the smarter choice here against IG given that they're going to have a guardsman blob given that they're going to have a massive range blob Distort field used onto the Guardian Weapons team here, unable to protect them from that shotgun blast and Wraith Guard now on the field. Phoenix knowing that Dilla is now tier 2 and even a Warlock to lead the Wraith Guard given that the Warlock Commander is actually currently down. And Phoenix unable to actually get any generators here. Still in control of this lower part of the ground so he does actually have the extra requisition and does have the VP advantage here. 482 to 233. But Dilla now that he is tier 2 should be able to get the VP advantage or should be able to get a bit of map control into his favour with those Wraith Guard on the field. Lord Commissar though, it does need to be a little bit careful. Still no upgrades on him just yet. Might be time to consider a Power Sword given that they're Wraith Guard on the field. Wraith Guard are heavy infantry and are vulnerable to the Power Sword since it is power melee damage. The Warlock has also been repurchased as well. Could even get the Bionic Eye upgrade to go with those cast chins. Those cast chins have done a lot of work so far, nearly level 2 as well. Do also have the Demolition Man upgrade, so you're there on 1050 health instead of 900. But the Bionic Eye will allow the Catachins to gain extra free movement speed, extra 100% damage, and will also heal all the models that are damaged as well. And it will allow them to tie up the Wraith Guard while at the same time doing a lot of damage to them at the same time. And Lord Commissar taking a lot of damage here, the Immolator doing a lot of work for a dealer, but the Commissar gained very low. One more hit from that Immolator might be enough to do it here. Taking a lot of damage, even a retreat grenade as well. That's going to be the end of that Commissar Immolator going to be casted onto the Kastasha's egg to force them off. At the same time, Flamer Guardsman have managed to actually bash Adila's power completely. Adila without any units in the area to actually defend it. And the Sentinel even mid as well to try and tear down that power node. The power node was already heavily damaged earlier from some Flamer Guardsmen. These are some different Flamer Guardsmen though, and Sentinel able to actually capture that. Could even go for a decap, but the decap is going to be unsuccessful here as Adila does actually have some units in the area. But Adila going to get in control of that top side map. Going to be a 2 to 1 cap now. Warlock going to go in very aggressively here. Guarded Weapons team is also jumping into the area. 
Meanwhile, the rest of the forces are making their way towards mid. Wraithguard can tear down a generator farm incredibly quickly. And it looks like Adila is going to go in for a power bash. I'm not sure if that Guardian Weapons team can fire from that position. There is this terrain in the way. It might be that can only fire on this half of the arc instead. But Sensor is going to be coming in. Immolate is going to go down here. Doesn't actually do much damage to the generators, but it's going to force these Flame Guardsmen off in the area. Stormtroopers are in the area. Going to get an assault here. Going to be very effective against the Guardian Weapons team, who is very grouped up right now. There is detection on the Warlock here. That leads this Dire Avenger squad. Problem is, it's very small radius at only 15, the same radius as a Sentinel. They are now going to get seen. Grenade is going to get thrown into that Guardian Weapons team. is going to do a lot of damage. I need to actually finish off the squad. Now Stormtroop is going to try and force melee now onto the Wraith Guard. And at the same time, Dire Avengers are not able to do too much here. But Wraith Guard going to turn around now. Stormtroop is going to retreat away just in time there. That one salvo would have done quite a lot of damage had they not been retreating away in a second Wraith Guard squad here for Adila. I'm not sure about second Wraith Guard squad in particular. These Wraith Guard are doing a lot of damage, a couple more salvos, but the flare going to go down, going to prevent them from actually firing. Ogren is going to be coming in onto the field here, going to charge in that Guardian Weapons team, and these Wraith Guard are getting a little bit too close here. Ogren is though going to get suppressed, going to try and use their melee charge to get in here. But unable to actually finish off that Guardian Weapons team is a Wraith Guard going to be entering a structure here. You need to be careful that the Stormtrooper grenade is on cooldown for another 30 seconds, roughly. At the same time, Grenade going to get thrown down on the retreat path of Adila's own units there. But the Dire Avengers going to be able to get away. The Warlock that leads them is going to remain alive. Going to knock down a couple of Ogren models and it's going to actually help them get away. But the Stormtroopers taking so much damage from that salvo there. Going to get forced off in the end, and Ogren's making their way to that right hand side here. Warlock is going to try to fight them with the Immolator, but it's not going to be enough. The Warlock, though, is going to retreat away, and so he should. At only 450 HP, can definitely not fight those Ogrens. Wraithguard, though, able to take down the Stormtroopers, and they just came out of base and were upgraded with the Assault Kit as well. Given that they spent, that makes them means that they were worth 475 requisition. Wraithguard going to get stunned here by the sensor. Flame Guardsmen on their way to try and defend, and Wraithguard going to be backing away. The Ogren's going to get control of that right hand side once again in a second. The Guardian Weapons team going to be coming out, and. Adila not even to worry so much now about Stormtroopers coming in for a flank against this Guardian Weapons team, given that they are now dead. But these an extra suppression teams who actually control these Ogrens to keep them suppressed so they can't get into melee combat. Castrian is going to try and force melee here onto these Wraith Guard. Wraith Guard, you need to be careful to power melee very effective against them. Oh, reliable even getting used here to try and knock back these Dire Avengers before they can get any retreat grenade. Fleet of Foot is activated as well. Dilla tries to position himself, might throw some grenades onto the ramp, might be very effective here. But the grenades are going to come maybe a little bit too late. Grenades are going to land either side slightly too late though. IED is also placed down at the VP as well. But Adila without any detection in the area is going to take the full brunt of this if it does go off, or the Warlock leading this Wraith Guard squad could definitely go down anyway. Stormtroopers have been replaced here for Phoenix. Going to be coming out with the Assault Kit once again. Grenade going to get thrown. Guardian Weapons Team going to get forced off here. 387 VPs to 127. Adila is hanging on here in this game without his journey to farm. At the same time, Phoenix without his. Both players are forced to remain tier 2 for the remainder of this game until they can actually get a generator farm back up. So, so even upgrading to the missile launcher here. Decides to actually cancel that upgrade though. And some guardsmen here. Going to take quite a lot of damage from these Wraith Guard. Needs to retreat away. Warlock even upgrading to the Merciless Witchblade there. Not the Merciless Witchblade, sorry. The Witchblade of Kernus. Giving them the Ethereal Slash ability which you just saw. Which does a melee knockback in a radius. It does an insane amount of damage if you actually position yourself correctly against a retreating unit. Also does 71 power melee DPS. So it's going to be very effective against these Ogres since they are super heavy infantry guards. I mean, weapons team gain away there with full models. Warlock, um, Wraithguard squad story needs to be very careful here. Ogrens doing a lot of damage but down very low themselves. Only on 750 HP. Needs to be careful of some Dire Avenger grenades here. Castrian is going to get forced off. One grenade is used. A second grenade is available though for these Dire Avengers. And that grenade is going to do an insane amount of damage. Bringing the Ogrens down to just two out of three models. The Bonehead has gone down. And Lord Commissar has been repurchased here. Meanwhile, on the right hand side, um, Wraithguard taking a lot of damage from Stormtroopers here. Glad the point blank grenade. Still on three out of four models. Wraith. War uh, sorry, the Warlocks that was leading the Wraithguard squad has now gone down when that happens as well. The Wraithguard also gets stunned. They do actually take damage as well because of it. So you do need to be careful when you get the Warlock purchases 
or warlock upgrades, and you try not to lose the models, which is a bit harder said, a bit easier said than done. But Ogre is going to get forced off here. The Bonehead has been repurchased. The IED detected 289 VPs to 127. Stormtrooper is going to try and fight this Warlock here. The Warlock so low, going to be forced to retreat away. These Stormtroopers are doing an insane amounts of damage right now. These double Wraith Guard, though, not going to, or going to struggle right now, given how mobile Phoenix's army is. Given that there's only a single Guardsman squad, and Phoenix isn't blobbing up very much together, so the double Wraith Guard are definitely struggling right now. And without any crowd control here, from Adila, it makes it a bit more difficult. Adila might even consider getting the warp throw to actually throw the melee units away from him to throw them towards him into a wraith guard area where he's going to shoot it up, maybe. But something extra to try and control the melee units on the field right now. If Adila was warp spider, the entangling web combined with the double wraith guard would have been extremely strong against Castrians, against the Ogrins. They wouldn't have been able to actually do anything or too much at all. A Wraith Guard going to get controlled. That higher ground Cashin is going to get forced away here. Commissar has also got the Bionic Eye upgrade now, so units are going to be able to tie up those Wraith Guard very, effic very effectively, especially these Cashins, especially these Ogrins. You can execute one of the models. You can even execute the Bonehead sometimes if you want to keep on 3 out of 4 models. or well, not 3 out of 4 models. If you want to try and keep on full models later on, you can execute the bonehead and then start to instantly repurchase them, although it's a very expensive execution in comparison to just buying a single model. And that sense of going to go down. It's actually getting melee down there by Dire Avengers. Unable to actually walk anywhere. Guardsmen also going to get four stuff in the end there as well. Homicide are going to tie up a Guardian Weapons team as well. There's no suppression available here on the higher platform for Adila unless these Wraith Guard land their shots. But the melee army is coming in. Cashchins and Ogren's mines on retreats as well. Homicide without enough energy actually does have enough energy to execute right now. Cashchins though taking insane amounts of damage from that. Wraith Guard Salvo might even go down overall down to just 53 HP. A gaze is up in the area. Still no execution though from this Commissar and a Warlock leading that Wraith Guard squad is going to go down, Grenade can get thrown down at the same time. I'm surprised that Phoenix didn't actually execute any of his Ogrins or Catachins in that engagement. I think he could have maybe done a little bit more damage. Could even chase that Wraith Guard squad down with the Ogrins with the insane movement speed from the Bionic Eye. 130, 128 VPs to 127 the VPs now going to be in favour of Adila after he has been behind on VPs the entire game. And with the Sentinel down a heavy weapons team is going to be coming in to actually replace them. Meanwhile, a Falcon going to be coming out here for Adila, going to be giving him a loss of mobility. The heavy weapons team has been purchased in re in response to this Falcon since Phoenix doesn't really have any AV to actually counter it. The Bionic Eye execution onto the Ogrens might be a good idea here with the mines. If that Falcon gets caught out by a mine, and the Bionic, and if the Ogrens are executed with the Bionic Eye, they could actually chase down this Falcon very effectively right now. Dilla really needs to be careful here with his Falcon. A Bionic Eye execution with more mines could really get that Falcon killed. Meanwhile, the Warlock on that right-hand side does actually get the warp throw ability now, but going to get forced off by those stormtroopers in the end. Castrians grouping up a little bit too close together to Salvo is going to bring the Castrians down to less than a third HP and they are going to get forced away. And an also cannon is going to be upgraded onto the heavy weapons team. Stormtroopers are coming to the area but stormtroopers without their melt kits with the assault kits not going to do too much that Falcon. These Dire Avengers though are going to go in very aggressively just for a grenade. We'll do quite a lot of damage to that heavy weapons team, but in the end we'll get four stuff there. Guardian weapons team is also still set up here, and the Falcon is going to have to defend alone with the Guardian weapons team here. Guardian weapons team really needs to focus down those Ogrens though. Focus them down maybe a little bit too late. The Ogrens are a little bit too close right now. And there's the Barnakai execution. It does give immunity to suppression as well, so they do not care about that at all right now. The Ogrens are just destroying everything. Guardian Weapons team could even go down here. A first one has gone down, a second one will go down at the same time. Guardsmen able to retreat away in time. And Ogrens getting healed up as well with that aura of discipline from the Lord Commissar. He is currently buffing these Ogrens by a lot right now. Warp Throw going to be throwing these Ogrens away. One Ogren model though still in engagement was immune to that Warp Throw apparently and the Wraith Guard going to take a lot of damage. Falcon is going to try and load up these Wraith Guard but the Wraith Guard not getting inside that Falcon. Should be able to get in Falcon in time though. And the Ogrens are going to have to back away. But the Ogrens are able to take, able to take down two Guardian Weapons teams. Adila now down to no suppression whatsoever. Really needs something to actually control these Ogrens. And the Warp Throw is not going to be enough to control an Ogren squad. A second Guardian Weapons, or a third Guardian Weapons team now is going to get needed here. Or is needed straight for Adila. 
Did own control of that right hand side, not for long though, as Catachins are here in the area. And these Catachins, if they just force Melo into the Dire Avenger, should be able to do fairly well. And now going to force melee onto them. Grenade could get thrown down, but the Cashins in melee combat are going to take reduced damage from that grenade. And the Cashins, when they are forcing melee, are also going to be splitting up quite a bit. Cashins, when they are not forcing melee, when they are in range stance, are grouped up quite a bit. And Cashins able to detect this webway gates here as well. Diving is though, doing all right in melee. They do actually have the healing from that gates, but it's not going to be enough here. And they're retreating away instead of gaining inside the gate. Going to be taking a lot of damage. Oh, reliable could get used to try and finish them off here as well. In the end, they'll just take down this gate and they'll try and force the melee onto the Guard once they come in. Still no suppression hit available here for Dylan. These Ogrens able to just tie up those Wraith Guard. Grenade is going to get thrown down, but going to do a little bit more damage to those Wraith Guard instead of the Ogrens. And in the end, Phoenix going to hold that top area. Unable to actually push down this bottom side. Commissar could actually execute the Castrations here with the Barnakai to get them back into combat, but decides not to do that in the end. 34 VPs to 86. Phoenix is going to slowly bleed his way to victory, being in control of the higher ground here with two VPs compared to Adil, who's only in control of one, which is now going to be zero as the Commissar is going to capture that lower ground. Falcon is going to be pushing in, Dire Avenger is not even fully reinforced here, looks like Adil really wants to save on requisition and a flare going to get dropped down, the Commissar is allowed now to flank this guided weapon team forced to unset up. Warlock is coming in through mid, Stormtroopers infiltrated here, Dylan not knowing exactly where they are, the Guardian Weapons team getting tied up by the Commissar, at the same time he is managing to push through in the top side, Dire Avengers need to be very careful, there are mines on the ground as well, but the Ogren is able to walk past it, not going to detonate friendly mines. At the same time, these Dire Avengers taking so much damage here from these Ogrens, nearly level 3 now. Wraith Guard able to land a few shots there, able to actually get suppression onto the Ogrens, but it's not going to be enough. Meanwhile, the Guardian Weapons team here is going to go down here to the Commissar. Ogren is getting very low right now. Guardsmen are going to be pushing into the area. Need to be careful though. The Falcon and Wraith Guard are going to be a bit too much. Going to force melee. The Commissar is available for the squad. Well, the Commissar is upgrade is in the squad as well. So the Commissar does actually do quite a lot of damage in comparison to other Guardsmen and compared to the Sergeant. Warlock coming in for a flank behind a bunker. Going to get torn down. Heavy weapons team forced to move elsewhere. Wraith Guard going to go in for the capture, 34 VPs to 24. Castrogen is able to capture that right hand side. Dire Avengers trying to make their way down here. The Warlock able to capture that natural at the same time. Wraith Guard going to capture this as well. It's going to be a 2 to 1 cap here for Adila. Heavy Weapons team is set up here as well, but the Warlock is on his way. Commissar going to tie up those Wraith Guard. Warlock going to be jumping in now. Going to be able to get in the Fear of Slash onto this Heavy Weapons team if it's not careful. Wraith Guard trying to get in some shots. A Fear of Slash going to go off. Not close enough to actually wipe that heavy weapons team though. Falcon is still in the area as well, going to run over a couple of mines, Stormtroopers entering the area, Commissar does have full energy, could Bionic execute someone, Ogren is going to be jumping in here with their charge, the Warlock is also going to go down, Stormtroopers running away, the Commissar could even execute these Ogrens and they can run in. In fact it's going to be the heavy weapons team, and yes the heavy weapons team still does get the speed boost. But the speed boost doesn't allow them to tear down or set up faster. But that Falcon down to just 1 HP. They able to barely get away. The also drop going to come in. But the Refactor Shield makes the Commissar immune to knock that. Also going to be jumping in onto that. Heavy Weapons team to tie up. Allowing the Falcon to actually get back into combat here. But the Falcon already in combat. The Ogren is going to try and chase it down. The range damage from the Ripper Guns could be enough. But instead the Ogren is able to actually get the final hit that they needed. The Dire Avengers have gone down on that right hand side. So Adila unable to actually cap it. 1 VP here for Phoenix is able to actually hold into the game. It's currently a once one cap, the Warsock actually able to get a knockback onto that Commissar, even though he had the Refactor Shield turned on, the Scorpion Shield, or no, sorry, the Distort Field is used onto the Warsock here as well. She is going to try and get a cap if that Commissar does not get a special, then it's going to be game, but he is able to get a special, the Warsock going to jump straight back onto the capture, the Distort Field is not going to be enough, the Commissar with the stubbornness, or not the stubbornness, but with his default weapon is going to be able to finish off that Warsock. Some Dire Avengers making their way to that right hand side once again, Adila not in control of his natural VP on the high ground here, was decapped by some Ogrens, 1 VP to 7. Dire Avengers is going to throw a grenade onto themselves, going to actually kill themselves and try and do some damage to the Catachins at the same time. Adila, I don't know if he's actually gets a capture here. Karanier wants an O cap right now, and he's not going to be able to capture this VP in time. And at the same time, Phoenix was going to capture this VP a bit quicker, so the bear 2 to 1 cap. And Phoenix is going to be able to win the game.